Hello, I'm going to tell a story, and it starts with uh, Scripture Proverbs 14.1, and that says, Every wise woman encourages and builds up her family, but a foolish woman, over time, will tear it down by her own actions. So my experience is that I was that foolish woman. At the time, uh, several years ago, my husband was in sales and it was a um, difficult time because income wasn't regular and I was feeling very anxious about that and angry. And I took it out on him and my, my children and I just was uh, very frustrated and hard to live with at that time. But I wanna tell you the good news is that God provided an amazing miracle at that time. Just when I thought that um, we were gonna have to be homeless, that perhaps we would start camping at a nearby campground and just move around every two weeks, I honestly thought that's what we would have to do because I didn't see a way to uh, pay our rent and I knew we were gonna to have to move out. And uh, very soon, around that same time, this wonderful man came and offered my husband a job and it was to be an undertaker. He had a funeral home in town and he needed some assistance. So um, the great thing was that along with that job, there was an apartment, a little, actually it was a duplex, a nice little home that we could all move into. So God uh, provided this wonderful miracle for us and in the midst of my having no faith, and that's his wonderful grace that he did provide that. So then several years later, um, I still hadn't quite become a wise woman. I was still somewhat of a foolish woman and I was, um, we were struggling in our marriage. There was a lot of turmoil and I was feeling depressed and I just kind of began to think to myself, well, gosh, you know, what do I have to offer? What does my life look? It's no, it no seems to be different. Uh, it doesn't seem to be different than anyone else's life around me. I'm depressed, I'm angry, I have marriage problems, I'm stressed at work, and it just didn't feel like I had the right things to offer, even though I was a woman of faith. And I just kind of began to question all that and wonder why, why don't I have something good to tell people? I didn't feel like I had good news. And um, so the result of that is that I began to go to a wonderful fellowship uh, here in town where I live. And the woman that started it, her whole goal was to teach uh, other women how to come and abide with Jesus, how to be in that secret place and how to, um, she provided this place where there was beautiful worship music, a place to just relax and and be quiet before the Lord and just let his love uh, pour over us and to learn how to be at rest in that situation. And um, also I began to listen to some messages about God's love for me and that it didn't depend on me and that it was just really an overwhelming love that he has for me and for each of us. And that the goal of my faith was to be transformed into love. That's what he desired for me, that I would be so impacted by his life in me that I would become love. And I knew I was a long way from that, but I wanted that. Um, and then I also spent a lot of time as I was experiencing those moments, um, just writing down in my journal, lots of things, lots of thoughts, but also what I thought God was speaking to me. I would just like get a letter from God telling me how much he loved me. And that was very special <clears throat> and transformative. And also, in addition to all those things, we began to be in a fellowship where all of them really believed that they were highly valued by God. And it wasn't a matter of uh, particular behavior, but they were just valued by God because they believed in him and loved him. And so these were all good things that really made a difference in my life. And God began to break into my world and I began to know him in the secret place. And another wonderful fruit of all that time is that while I would be having my quiet moments with the Lord and reading some scripture or reading a, a good devotional book, I would just begin to sing the scripture that was presented there just in, as a little love song to God. And he met me in that. And um, 
it was just beautiful. And later, I began to take those songs and turn them into harp songs. And so that's what I hope to share with you later in different uh, other kinds of Facebook Live or Facebook videos. So um, also at that time, God changed me from feeling like I was a victim to a person who had victory. And I took ownership from my relationship with my husband and my own problems, and I asked for his forgiveness. And it became um, a much better marriage. And uh, I let go of all the regrets that I had of mistakes I'd made, and I began to believe that I was actually chosen, holy, and beloved. And that comes from a special verse. It's from Colossians 3.12. It says, So as those who have been chosen of God, holy and beloved, put on a heart of compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. And we really can't do that unless we believe that we are chosen, holy, and beloved. And uh, the fruit of this, as I told you, was just learning how to honor God and to love him and greater intimacy in my private um, uh, secret place times with him. And now, as a result of that, I have a passion for other women, other men, anyone else who is struggling with their relationship with God to know that intimacy, that they really can know, that you can know his deep love for you and his deep care for you and his deep uh, tenderness in those quiet moments when you're with him. He's not there to beat you over the head with rules or uh, your failures, he's there to really to love you and to tell you how much you mean to him. So I was going to say that if you have if you have a desire for that, then I could just give you three simple steps for today, and I hope to do further talks about ways that you can become more uh, intimate with the Lord. So the first thing is to receive the full forgiveness that Jesus offers. And if you have not received Jesus, all you have to do is just agree that you need him to forgive you of your mistakes, the things that you're sorry about. Um, we call them sins, but they're just missing the mark. You know, we didn't quite get it right, and we know that we need help. And ask him to come into your heart. And we know that what he did on the cross is he canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all and they cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. If you have more questions about this, you can private message me and I'll be happy to talk to you about that. The second thing is to believe that you are chosen, holy, and beloved. God does love you. He cares about you, and he wants an intimate relationship with you. Meditate on the scriptures and uh, look for the ones that talk about how much he loves you, and I will provide some of those. Desire him. The third thing is to desire him above all else, and he will begin to change your life from within the secret place. He's waiting for you. My favorite verse, or one of my favorite verses, especially on this topic, is from Song of Songs. It says, Oh, my dove, that's you. In the clefts of the rock, in the secret place of the steep pathway, let me see your form. Let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your form is lovely. That's from Song of Solomon. I plan to share more posts about this, and I hope that you've enjoyed this one, and I hope that you will join me in just longing and seeking and coming into the secret place to know God's love for you. Thank you.